Hey, what's up everyone? Darkwing Dead here bringing you part one of my the uh, Iron Man suit build. Um, so this is going to be a pretty long video segment. Obviously, it's not going to be done in one segment. Um, I'm basically just documenting you know, my journey in depth of building this suit. Um, this is something that I actually started and then stopped um, because the files weren't that good and there was a lot more um, things involved than I realized to really do these these suits properly. And that's why, you know, other, other builders, um, you know, you see them take so long and um, why they're so in-depth. There's just, there's just a lot. And to do these right, you don't really want to skip steps. So... I don't really know how many video segments there's going to be. Uh, on this segment here, this is specifically going to be how I um, was able to measure myself, um, the trials and tribulations of getting the pieces to fit, to printing them, how much filament I used, um, best practices, and then a little prep in merging some of the pieces together. Um, by no means is this suit anywhere near done. I'm gonna try to put a video out like every two weeks just on what I've what I've been doing and what I've get getting done. Um, there's just so many topics, and the suit's not gonna be done in 90 days. Uh, I'm unveiling it in the next 90 days uh, in May. It's not gonna be fully done. Um, I'm just hoping to have it presentable. So that's kind of the goal for this is to uh, stay on the horn. Um, I've kind of put other projects on the back burner. Uh, and I'm really just focusing on this one. So, um, like I said, I've got everything printed. Um, I got some cool pieces here. You can see there's obviously things that need to get fixed and put together, but I've got a, a lot of pieces done. Everything is done and printed. Um, I've started merging the pieces together. So, uh, this is just kind of an introductory, how I printed the, um, pieces, um, the amount of filament I use that way, it'll give you guys insight on, uh, you know, what really is involved in building these suits, very in-depth, um, tutorial here. So, uh, without any further ado. Computer here and uh, really all I'm gonna do is just kind of show you um, some of the I guess trials and tribulations and way ways I was able to uh, calculate um, printing the pieces um, the file that I used um, the whole suit like which particular suit I went with and why um, I didn't go with anything crazy I just kind of kept it simple for the first one um, I am doing a Punisher war machine suit just because I've really only seen one or two um, so I'm trying to do a little bit of a different spin uh, on mine. A lot of people liked my weathered uh, Captain Rex helmet, so I'm, I think I'm kind of going to go in that direction when it gets to painting, but we're nowhere near painting it, so we, I don't even have the suit harness built and everything yet. So like I said, this tutorial is going to show you step by step by step by step um, and just what I went through to, to get this done. So uh, I'm going to turn the camera around here. Uh, I'm going to show you Armorsmith and 3D Builder, which were the main components that I used um, to get the suit measured uh, and whatnot. And then just kind of show you uh, just a few other tips and tricks. We'll calculate how much filament we use to print the suit. I'll show you all the pieces and then kind of show you some of the uh, steps I've done already in uh, reinforcing the suit. Uh, I also have a couple video clips uh, at the end that just shows you some of the progress that I've been doing beforehand. Some of the electronics and just some of the other things that I've done, uh, reinforcing with fiberglass and stuff like that. Um, you know, when you make these suits, definitely one thing is you don't want to skimp out and do too light of an infill or stuff like that. Um, I mean, you can't really make these things thin. If you do, they'll, they'll snap. And a couple pieces that actually did happen to me, so... 
I'll show you on that. And it wasn't in the case that they were printed too thin. It was just the fact the one I just ran into a crappy piece, a crappy roll of filament. Um, it didn't matter what printer I printed it on. Um, it, I mean, you gave it a little bit of force and it just snapped. So it was kind of wasted time there. And, you know, that's to be expected when you're doing these suits. Um, you're going to run into, uh, you know, print fails and, and things like that. Um, this was uh, one of the thighs that I was doing that for whatever reason, um, it the support blew out and then we ran into a clog and, you know, it was pretty early on in the print. I wasn't even about to try to merge it back together. I just kind of started over. I mean, I only lost about four hours on that, so I, I wasn't too upset, but um, these things do happen, and that's why I'm documenting this. It's, you know, you see guys with these finished suits, and you think, oh, they printed the suit in a week, and this and that, and blah, blah. It's not really like that at all. So, but we'll cover that later in the video. Uh, what I'm going to do is just show you some of my settings here, uh, show you Armorsmith and 3D Builder, and then I'll show you all the pieces that I printed. All right, so I guess I'll show you first before I show you Armorsmith. This is the suit that I went with, and it's just the Mark III. Um, I ended up buying... Oh, sorry, I'm yawning. I ended up buying the um, the file uh, off a of seller on Etsy. Um, when I first started this project, I was going to do the Mark VII, and I got the file off Thingiverse and ended up being a low-poly file it was very thin it was pretty much a nightmare um so i ended up printing like the whole top half and it was just a huge waste of time and filament so i basically said okay i'm going to buy a file that's a little bit better um i didn't jump in and buy a nico file or anything like that because honestly just in my opinion 200 dollars is kind of insane i think the one i was looking at was like 250 which is just nuts Oh, I'm yawning a lot today. So, I just kind of waited and was looking at different ones, and I thought, I was like, eh, this one will be cool. I mean, it's it's just your basic war machine. It's nothing crazy. I just feel like everyone's doing Mark 85s. Like, all I see are Mark 7s, Mark 42s, and Mark 85s. That's all I see. So, I just want to do something different. I think war machine is um doesn't get the credit he deserves, <laughs> I guess, so to speak. So... This is just the one I was doing, and this is just a, a picture reference. It kind of shows all the angles. This isn't the actual seller I got it from, but I just bought it off Etsy. Um, I think it's actually under this tab. Uh, no, it's not. This was just, it's actually right here. It was off MaxCraft. Um, it's fifty bucks. Um, yeah, it was a real cool file. Um, only thing with this was when you bought the file, it only did. Um, like the right or the left side of it and then you just had to mirror the parts to do the other arms and everything so um i guess i had it pulled up right here yeah so when this file if you are interested in getting the same file this is what they send you and then you just had to mirror um all the other pieces here so uh which is quite easy i'll show you how to do that um but yeah that's the general layout uh the mark three um i've done the helmet um in the past so i figured i would do the suit so moving on to Armorsmith. So I'm going to yawn again now. I need coffee. Armorsmith is a, uh, it's a nice tool. Like it's a good guide. However, you, I wouldn't live and die by it. Um, nobody's body is perfectly proportional. Um, so that's kind of what makes it hard. Um, I'm not a very tall guy. I think on a good day, I might be 5'7". Um, so especially the legs and the arms were a little bit challenging. And again, at the end here, I'll show you all the pieces. I got lucky. Um, the thighs I got on the first shot, the calf though, I did have to redo. Um, these arms sucked. It took me like four tries. Bicep I got on the first try. Shoulders I got on the first try. Luckily, things like the chest, um, the hip pieces, most of the stuff I did get in one shot. However, if I would have went off my measurements on Armorsmith, they would have been too big or too small. So basically what you do on Armorsmith is you just, obviously you measure your body and then you load all of your STL files in here. And let's say we were doing um, the cod piece, I guess we could do. We would click it and we would hit attach. And then it basically asks you where you want to put it. So this is the left one. So you would try to put it 
somewhere on there and then it attaches. Uh, and then from there, you can right click it, you can translate the part, which basically, oops, sorry, I hit the camera, which basically just allows you to move it. So if you wanna move it forward, backwards, which is basically position it on your body. Um, like I said, it, it's, it's, a, it's a very nice tool, but there is fine tuning after the fact. So you basically get it positioned to, you know, where you want it. Um, and then you right click on it again and you would go to scale part and you could do uniform or non-uniform. I did non-uniform because like I said, nobody's body is perfectly uh, sequential. And then that from this point here, you can adjust it to um, however you want. Um, prior to doing all of this, you can um, measure the, uh, the mannequin here. So you can see how it's got 1.6 meters. Uh, like I said, that's around 5657. And then you can click each arm and you can change the size of them. So you can see here that these are all to my measurements on my body. So really what you have to do is get out some measuring tape and you measure, you, you basically form the, um, you know, the mannequin. You can see that's obviously nobody's arms look like that. <laughs> but you measure the mannequin to your body's, um, to its size. And um, yeah, you just get some measuring tape or a shoelace and a yardstick or whatever, however you want to do it. Um, and then you would just, you know, remeasure all these pieces here to the size of your body. So like I said, it is a nice guide. However, um, what I would end up doing is fine tuning it in 3D Builder. So let's say with Armorsmith, you've got the pieces um, fitted the way you want. So let's just take this thigh because I know this, this thigh was pretty close. Um, you end up basically uh, right clicking on it and then you're gonna do export model and you wanna do just that specific file and it's gonna export the model. Um, you wanna down click and save it to an STL and then just write in whatever you want and then save it. So you can see on here, um, these are every single piece that I did here. The arms, the biceps, the cod, every single piece I did individually. Um, so I would save them all uh, in here. And I, what I even did too, is you can see how it says full torso. I did a whole, this whole torso scaled to myself. And then I exported it to 3d builder and individually ungrouped the pieces and resized them. So I'll, I'll kind of show you that too, but literally everything on here is the whole suit readjusted. So I did them individual pieces, um, the arms, things like that. Um, and then, yeah, just mirrored them and, and saved them as new pieces. So you can see how there's arm piece one, arm piece two. See how there's 15 arm pieces because that one form I had to redo. So these were, and you can see the dates. It's like 12, 12, 12, 13, 12, 18. It's like all over the place. So there was a, a lot of trial and tribulation of actually getting them to fit properly. Um, you got to have patience with this. You are not going to get it on the first shot. Understand you are going to have to heat things up. You're going to have to bend them. You're going to have to cut things. That's just the name of the game. Um, but it's pretty easy. Like I said, once you get it, um, kind of close to on here, um, just right click, uh, export model. You don't want to do the whole model, just the single, and then just name it whatever you want and change it to an STL and then click save. Um, so that's kind of armor Smith in a nutshell. Like I said, it's a nice tool, but I would not live and die by it. Um, what I mostly did was I used Windows 3D Builder. Now, could you use Windows 3D Builder by itself? Yes. Um, that is what I originally did um, when I made my first suit. And it was close. It's just the biggest thing. It was a low poly file. You can see all the, the things I had pulled up here. Um, it was a low poly file. And it um, it was super thin. And it just looked, it, just the fact that it was low poly file, I looked at it and I was like, yeah, this is going to suck. Um, in the description on Thingiverse, the pictures of it, it was not a low poly file. It showed like a straight up suit. And then, of course, I jumped in and started printing things right away. Went to work, came back, and I'm like, oh, it won't look that bad. No, it looked pretty bad. So, um... I guess I could throw a picture up at the end of the video and, and show you how terrible that is. What I'm doing right now is I'm loading this um, this torso piece for you so you can kind of see it. Um, but I'll show you another, let me see here. I'll just say okay to this. Um, this was the last piece of the suit I was doing, which was the rear, um, 
leg back cover thing. Um, so what I would do in in this aspect is I would you know I'd measure it, I'd get it close in Windows 3D or in on, on Armorsmith, I would save the file. So I've got all my files here. You can see left rear leg cover. Um, what I would do is double click this and it would open it in Windows 3D Builder. Windows 3D Builder has a nice little option where you can go um, object and you can measure it. And it has the uh, snap measuring on. So you can just go, it'll get it right on a corner and it gives you the exact, you can switch this to inches. I just have it set to millimeters. Um, so you would take 105.65 divided by 25.4 because there's 25.4 millimeters in an inch. And this would give you the, uh, the inches left to right. And then you basically just take a tape measure and, and measure your leg. Um, so that's what I did. Um, I'll see if this is okay, cool. This is loaded. So this was the full torso. I scaled it very close to my body. This is a very cool feature in Windows 3D Builder. So let's say you have a full suit or a full helmet and it comes in a whole solid piece like this. So you can click it, it's one solid piece. There's an ungroup option right here and it literally splits the whole object up for you. So now I have every single piece of this suit split up. So what I would do is like on me, my waist needed to be smaller. So I was able to resize just this versus the whole thing. Cause if I resize the whole thing, like. I have a little bit bigger of a of a back and a chest. So if I scaled that uniformly, it wouldn't fit me the right way. So I had to slim the waist down. I had to actually make the hips a tad bit bigger. Um, I've played hockey my whole life. So I got, you know, like, I don't want to say beast legs, but my legs are a little bit bigger than other things. So, um, yeah, so I had, to, I had to adjust the hips a little bit. I had to slim the waist down. Um, I think the chest actually went a little bit smaller, but what I'm getting at is this is nice where you can just take a single piece and I'll deselect all and let's say you just want to adjust the chest, okay? So what I did is took the chest out. Oh, didn't want to do that. Hang on, let me go back. That's on the scale part. <laughs> we want to move it. Um, I, what I did is I moved the, the, uh, the chest out. So you can see just the chest is separate and then you're able to adjust it. What's even cooler is obviously this chest piece is huge. It's not going to fit on any of my printers. Um, you can edit it in Windows 3D Builder and you can split it. So then what I did was I took this and got it exactly centered. If we can get the pitch at 90 here, my computer's starting to lag. I must be running too many product projects. Okay, so it's at 90. So we can split this now because we're not going to be able to print this on one printer. At least I won't. I don't have a CR10 Max or anything. Um, so up here, uh, you can keep top, keep bottom, keep both. You want to keep both. So we split it. And it's going to split it in half. Deselect all. Just select the one. And now, boom, we split it. So now I know a lot of guys like Blender and stuff like that, but... Windows 3D Builder is so easy, like it's it's really simple uh, to do. So like right here, we just split our chest piece up and now it's perfectly symmetrical. Oop, clicked the wrong thing. Um, it's perfectly uh, symmetrical and it's in two pieces now. So now we can just boom, load one up on one printer, boom, load one up on the other and we're good to go. Um, and then obviously you'd have to, you know, weld that together when, when, you, put it, when you put it together. But for the most part... Um, you know, on this, uh, I went through and there were certain pieces that, um, you know, I had to split like the back piece. I had to split. This is one solid piece. I had to split that because it was too big. Um, so Windows 3D, Build 3D Builder is a great free option. Um, you know, you don't have to go through if you're not super um, familiar with CAD programs. It's very, very easy to split parts. So I actually did that. Um on uh the whole suit you know i split it where i needed it to split so it would fit on my printer um things like the upper shoulder pieces those fit um the cod piece i did have to split into two pieces that would not fit so this uh this piece right here um just it was just a wide piece so i had to split that in the middle so i did the same thing with that as i did the chest so split all the necessary parts up i'm not going to go through and show you every single thing i split um I will show you something though when you're doing arms. I'll show you a little trick here. So, um, what I was running into with um, 
the arm pieces is when I would go to put it on, um, it was so tight on my hand and the bottom was just like really big. Um, so I had to split the bottom and I'll show you what I'll show you the two pieces side by side here in a second. But what I actually did is I was able to split it and make a, a, a custom cuff. And this is again, something that you can do. So, um, on this, let's see if I still have it. Uh, probably not. Oh, I do. Okay. So we'll open this. Your parameter is incorrect. Come on. All right, we'll just load it. Uh, it should be arm new. All right, I, I, I switched things up and I went and got the arm piece because I, I don't want you just staring at a screen the whole time. So this is the original arm piece that I printed. Um, came out real nice, but here was the, the biggest issue is when I put this on, I mean, I can't get my hand through. Like, I'm I'm done. I can't, It it's you know, try to turn it here. It's, I mean, my hand is, it's not coming out, <laughs> you know? So, and if I made this bigger, the, you know, the forearm is fine. There's plenty of room in the forearm. If I make this bigger, I'm gonna start looking like Popeye. You know, this needs to get bigger to fit my hand through, but then this is just gonna be so huge. It's gonna be bigger than my bicep and it's gonna look weird. So printing this in a single piece, just, it, it, it wasn't going to work. So what I ended up doing was um, just cropping off uh, this bottom piece, uh, if you can see that there. Uh, that way, uh, my hand could slide, you know, all the way through. Um, and it was just a lot, it was just a lot better of a fit, a lot more comfortable. And I reprinted the the arm and it's actually smaller. So it's, it's much more of a snugger fit and it fits a lot better. And what I did is I still obviously printed the bottom part here but just made this magnetic so all this has to do is this piece here just pops off and now and it's still it's still snug but i can actually get my hand through and then this here try and do this with one hand just pops on and we're good to go so and then when i want to take it off You slide your hand out. So I recommend that. Um, and like, again, this, this, the split tool on this is fantastic. So, you know, I started with, with this for the arm and then just basically I followed this line and just split that right off. You can see it's right here in the picture as well. Hopefully you can see that. So I just split it right here and then I save that extra piece and just printed it and then boom, pop it on with some magnets. So that's, for me, that's a cool little trick for arms. I, I'm not going to say that nobody has done it yet. I, I don't know. I, I, I want to say I don't pay attention to other people's suits, but um, I just kind of dive right into a project and just try to figure things out on my own and then share my results with other people. So um, this was a very cool, um, I think, obstacle I was able to overcome because I was looking at this and I'm like, dude, my arms are going to be huge. They're going to be, you know, rattling all around this new piece. It fits nice and tight. This just pops on with some magnets, and then what's really nice is the um, the way I did it is this is actually the top, and I know it looks like the bottom, but the where the um, magnetic piece is, it's actually covered by this arm weapon. Um, so I kind of just strategically placed all those things, and it worked out really well. Um, so that's just a, a little overview of Window 3D Builder. Um, and like I said, what I would actually do is each piece, uh, I would come in here, and I would double check, I would go to the object feature and I would measure it and I would measure everything front to back, top to bottom, see what the measurement is, um, you know, just make sure everything was lined up because although Armorsmith got it close, it wasn't exactly dead on. Using this Windows 3D Builder, this measuring tool allowed me to completely get it tuned into the right size and split objects and modify objects uh, the way I needed to. Um, what's also nice too is if you do have a bigger printer and you want to um, merge pieces. So let's say I wanted to bring this bottom piece back in. Um, I can see if I can find it here real quick. Uh, insert, add. You can actually merge pieces back together. 
Um, so I'll show you that real quick and then I'll, okay, let's see, arm, hopefully it's this one because I have two arm cuffs. It's going to be one of them. So there's that piece that I, um, that I actually split off. Um, so it's let's, so like I said, let's just say you want to merge these pieces together. Um, all you have to do is move the piece and line it up, um, to where you need it to be. So we'll just get it close for now. That's not exactly dead on, but It's kind of close. <laughs> so we have the bottom piece here. And the top piece. They're two separate pieces. So let's just say we wanted to merge that back together and make it one solid piece. We click both of them. We hit group. And now it's one solid piece. So... You know, I know a lot of people have mixed feelings about Windows 3D Builder. It really is simple and easy for a lot of things. Obviously, it's not a full-on CAD program, but, um, you know, it, it just works. You know, for certain things, it works. It's simple, it's easy, and it worked really well for me. So without it, I definitely would have struggled to get certain elements done uh, on the suit. So that's just a quick overview of Windows 3D Builder. Like I said, um, I went through and every single uh, file here... Um, it's actually under helmet. Every single file here was measured on Armorsmith and then readjusted through Windows 3D Builder to an exact spec. So very, very nice program. I highly recommend using it when just to, just to mod things a little bit, just to do little tweaks here and there when you're doing your suit. Uh, it really will pay uh, dividends as far as getting that suit to uh, fit properly. Uh, what I'm going to do is just show you some of my settings here uh, in Cura, and then I'll show you the whole suit uh, printed. All right, so loaded up here in uh, Cura. This, again, these are the last pieces that I printed. And I'm yawning again. I don't know why. I just am. Um, so I printed my whole suit at a 0.32 layer height. Um, honestly, when you can get your machine dialed in and tuned in, I have not seen a huge significant difference in pointing at or printing at 0.2 or 0.24 or 0.28. Um, honestly, I knew I was going to sand these and get these knocked down. So to me... The wear and tear, the time, um, the fact that I'm in Florida and the humidity, uh, like I said, I already had one issue where, you know, this clogged. So to me, I was just trying to print them efficiently, not necessarily super fast, but just as efficient as possible. And overall, I mean, like here's one of the arm cannons um, for a 0 0.32 layer height. This is not bad at all. Um, really, when you can understand your machine when you can properly adjust the settings and there's you know there's some things here a um, little bit of the infill showed um but for the most part i mean i can remember when i first got into doing 3d printing and i would print at 0.3 and it looked like garbage you know and then you know i started tweaking things obviously yawning in the middle of videos again um i was able to tweak things and you know get prints you know way better at just a 0.32 layer height um wasn't using any fancy filament. I'll let you guys know what I use, but you know, um, printed at a 0.32. Um, I did a 1.2 millimeter shell, uh, with three counts on the wall. Uh, my top and bottom thickness are one millimeter. Uh, I did five top layers and four bottom layers, uh, for the shell thickness. Uh, when I was using PLA, I did a infill percentage of 20 and some of the parts I did print in PETG and I printed those at fit. I just dropped it down to 15% because obviously they're a little bit more durable. Um, I don't print super fast. My retraction varied from 3.5 to 4.5 millimeters, uh, usually at 50 to 60 millimeters per second. Uh, it just depended on what filament I was using. I did do retraction tests on all of them. So I kind of knew a general idea, but I mean, it's not really that far off. So, um, 
a couple of them I I forgot to switch them and then I had string like crazy so it's I had to clean it up but it is what it, it was mostly with the PETG I just forgot to change them so uh print speeds for the most part were anywhere from 50 to 55 I never exceed that um you know it's just it you get a cleaner print when they're slower, you know what I mean? So you can see all my wall speeds here, 45, inner wall speed was 70. That's the, about the fastest I'll go. Uh, even my travel speed, uh, 120. Um, I just kind of keep everything slower, you know. Um, for the most part, the, the bigger part, something like this here, uh, I believe this printed in like nine hours. Um, so like I said, it's, uh, it, it, luck, I had three machines, you know, I was able to print a lot of, a lot of things on the, the v3 and the v2 and then all the smaller things like these were just printed on um my uh my cr10 mini so um it worked out really well oh and i'm yawning um supports it really did it, it really just depended um if it was something that had a high support um i would do maybe a 60 or a 65 but when it needed minimal to no support i would just do 70 percent overhang and 10 percent infill but for the most part, whenever I print my stuff, I really try to do it with as little supports as possible. Um, I try to use support blockers and things like that. Um, it just helps speed up the process quite a bit. But you don't want to remove supports to where it is going to be detrimental or potentially cause the print to fail. So that's really the biggest thing that I can, a um, bit of advice I can give you. But uh, Cura worked out great. Like I said, all the prints, uh, they were you know, they worked really well. I only had a couple issues here and there. Um, one thing I can say is if you own a CR10 V3, uh, don't try to do um, filament changes on the fly. So here was the one gun that I did the filament change and I got a terrible layer shift and it pretty much caused the gun to be Kaputsky. So I didn't have a lot of print failures, but this was one of them. And again, I'm, sh I'm, I'm not shying away from me I, i'm letting you know trials and tribulations one really big important thing i would do is have enough filament and make sure like if you do a, a print and like i mean this is a bad example but this is 70 grams let's say you were doing a print that was 580 grams like the thigh and you had 500 grams on your roll just start with a new roll i mean honestly it's there's such a risk there. I mean, with the Bowden setup, I think it's easier, but with the CR10 V3, that direct drive, it, I don't know, I, I'm i like 40% efficient with it. So now I've just kind of switched it up to where I just make sure I have enough filament in there. So always, always, always make sure um, you have enough filament when you're doing your prints prior to loading the machine, just because um, if you forget or you don't catch it in time, you got to start all over. And like I said, the thigh, this whole thigh piece, I mean, this is just a piece of it. I mean, the whole thigh took, uh, I want to say th close to 30 hours. Um, God forbid you're 90% into that print and then it fails because it gets clogged or you get a layer shift or it doesn't go through all the way. So that's just my bit of advice for, uh, for printing. Um, if you can get one whole single manufacturer of PLA, that's great. However, I like to try different PLAs out. Uh, this was actually Kodak PLA, and it, it's, it's actually really good. Um, I got it pretty inexpensive, so I figured I'd give it a shot, and it actually worked out really well. Um, so what I'm going to do now is kind of show you all the pieces to the puzzle and let you know how much filament we used, what filament I used, and some of the modifications I've done to the prints to just reinforce them. All right, so kind of a bird's eye view of the insanity that is building an Iron Man suit. So... This here is the entire suit minus the uh, like rib cage area. Uh, I'm actually cutting that down and I'm gonna merge it and weld it together. Uh, and I wanna do that in the next segment. So I don't, I, I wanna have some content for you guys so you guys can see like, you know, hey, where do you cut it? How do you merge it? Things like that. So um, I am saving some of that for the next section. I'm gonna show you some of the upgrades and, and things that I've done uh, to these pieces here. I also have some videos at the end, just some time lapses of some of the stuff that I did, nothing crazy. Um, but yeah, I mean, basically, you know, we've got, um, you know, your bicep pieces here. And like I said, these all fit, uh, really good. Um, I've got, you know, the ab pieces here. Sorry, I'm short. <laughs> uh, makes me look like I'm working out. Um, 
I have obviously the legs, you know, we've got the knees, um, we've got the uh, shins, and these I was able to do in one piece, and these just slide on, <laughs> and they fit. Uh, the the uh, the calves and the shins are actually a smidge too big, so I am going to have to put um, some foam back here. Um, but yeah, it was tough because when I first printed this part, um, it was way too small. And then I was just like, eh, I'm just going to go a little bit bigger. And I measured, I kind of got like chunky calves. So I wanted to make it, I wanted to make sure my foot slid in because you can see how it's got this opening in the back. So you kind of have to slide in. So I wanted to make sure I had enough room. Um, so the, the, the calves are going to be a little bit chunky. Um, but like I said, I kind of have stockier legs, so I, I don't really mind. And you can see that the thigh is pretty, uh, pretty, pretty chunky too. Um, but it does probably can't really see here. Should go lower. It does fit. So, um, yeah, I, I was pretty lucky other than that print failure on the thigh. I was able to get this in one shot. Um, this took about 30 hours. So I was, I was really happy. I was able to get that knocked down, uh, in one shot. Um, like I said, some of the pieces here I printed in uh, PETG just to speed up the process, but um, these are the uh, the shoulder pieces here, so those fit nice. Um, the foot pieces I had to make uh, a little bit bigger. Uh, and again, I actually used Windows 3D Builder. Um, these came pre-cropped, um, pre but the bottom part, I'll actually show you. The bottom part had... Uh, had a, it had a bottom to it and you know so I printed the one and I'm like that's gonna crack you know you can see how it's how it's shaped I'm like there's no way that's not gonna crack from walking so again I took this piece and just modified it sliced the bottom off in um Windows 3D Builder so now what I'm gonna do is just take an old pair of shoes and I'm gonna get some elastic and basically strap and modify those in so they'll fit my shoe perfectly. Um, and there's not really a whole, there's a little bit of room up in the front, but I'm gonna put like some elastic uh, or some foam so it fits on there really nice. And I'll probably end up printing um, like a latching strap, like one of those things that kind of like hooks in just so it stays in place. Um, but I'm gonna reinforce it with elastic. Um, this whole suit is going to be um, basically held on with a custom body harness. So I just kind of started making some of the parts. I'll show you all that because that's going to be in the next section. I'll have links and everything with what I'm using, how I'm making the suit. Um, but like I said, overall, everything fits well. Um, I had the gun here. I do have the shoulder gun. Um, this will go on the left shoulder. I printed it in two pieces just because I, I was worried after that first one if about it getting wonky or, or anything so but this will be one solid piece this i don't know if by may it'll be done but it'll be hooked up to an actuator that actually kind of levels it off and then pulls it back down i have the plans i just don't know if i have the time so uh but i got the gun there um i have the neck piece um the neck piece too does have magnets right now these are all just template magnets it's just to see if it will work and if it will hold it on. Um, but the neck piece I'm gonna do as a separate piece with two small uh, click in straps just to kind of hold it in place. Um, but it does fit. I don't know if we'll be able to get this on. I guess I could use my phone as a camera kind of. You gotta get it lined up exactly, so. There we go. Um, and then what I'll do is just have a strap just to kind of hold it um, in place. I might just do elastic with Velcro. I'm not sure, but it does um, fit pretty good. Um, this is the helmet that I'm using. So you can see it lines up pretty good. Um, and this is, this is a different War Machine helmet. I really haven't seen anyone use this one. Um, I believe it's the Mark IV. Um, it comes after the Mark III, so um, it's just a different helmet that I've seen, and I know, do, I've got tape on here, doing the uh, motorized face is going to be a challenge because there's little tabs here. I may have to cut those off. Only time will tell. Um, but that is one thing that will be uh, on this suit. 
um, is the, uh, I'm going to have a lot of electronics. I just don't know how much I'm going to have done by May. Um, hopes and dreams, basically. Um, but like I said, everything else fits real good. Uh, the arm cannons, the goal with these is to also have uh, some sort of servo or actuator to move the cannon forward and then have it come back. There will also be a small laser in here. Uh, I'll actually probably end up putting it um, somewhere at the top, making some kind of mount for it. Um, like I said, this is going to be an ongoing project. It's, it's never, it's never going to be done. <laughs> until, not, not until I start making the other suit. Um, but this is the, uh, the other arm piece here. And again, um, this was kind of like a trial run. This one has washers in it. So I have to like position my hand in a certain way. Um, I'm going to make all new brackets for it. Uh, it was basically just an idea to see if it would work and it did and it holds it. I'll reinforce this with some foam in here, but this sits a lot tighter. It's a lot snugger than the other one. The other one was just way too big, but then when I want to take that off, I just pop this off. And then just kind of slide my hand out and it is tight so it's not like it slides right out but uh, it works really good so that's just i guess my little um intro tip if you're doing suits is to crop them and make them fit um the other thing that i've done to the suits is i've started pla welding them so obviously like um this was three parts here and i still got <laughs> retraction fuzzies everywhere um, and I just started just PLA welding them. So basically what I use is a 3D pen and I go over, I kind of duct tape it on here and then go over it with a 3D pen and then take a soldering iron and smooth it all out. I don't dig into this that much because you don't want to potentially compromise the front part of it or make it weak. You want to add to it. So like I said, I'm going to have a whole video because there's a lot more stuff I have to PLA weld. So um, I use rapid, a combination of rapid fix and then just a PLA, uh, a 3D pen and it works out really great. Um, I have done some heavy, heavy reinforcement to the cod piece. Now, the cod area was one section that I did initially print too small, and I also ran into a section where um, I had some crappy filament. So, um, um, this piece here, this stuff just kind of shattered apart. Um, you can see right where I was actually putting it on and just completely snapped. And it's weird because some of it is sturdy and some of it is really frail. Uh, where the arch was it just completely fell apart. Um, I printed the back piece too and that completely fell apart too. So I just kept these just for um, I don't know remembrance. I don't know, but you, I mean, you can see how it just snapped. It's just, it was just, I don't know. It was I forgot the brand Cheap, I don't know it, <laughs> and it broke but instead of throwing all of it out um, I knew that the cod piece was going to need some additional reinforcement, um, just where it was. So I actually took the one piece that was too small that printed fine and I use it as reinforcement. So this is actually printed in black, um, PETG, and then I reinforced it on the interior, um, with some rapid fix and some PLA welds. And cause this whole section here is going to be, and you can see where the other one snapped to, this, I mean, this is gonna gonna carry some weight. You know, it's, it's it. You don't want it flexing and bending too much because it's thinner. It could crack. So I've reinforced all of this with scrap pieces. So again, when you're building these suits, if you make something that may be too small or maybe you don't think you're gonna use, think outside the box and recycle those products. Heat them up, bend them, form them, mold them to what you need, and boom. So. Like this center cod piece now is just completely solid. And I am going to reinforce just this area with some fiberglass, this whole inner working area. Um, I'm actually going to take this piece up here and I'm going to cut part of it off and then kind of line it up over here and overlap where I've already welded. Um, you can see how it's welded. And it's one piece and it fits. I just, I want to make it stronger and durable. Um, this is a piece that is going to be sliding on and off. It is a little bit tight on my hips. Um, like I said, I'm a hockey player, so I got a, a low midsection, I guess, or a low, a, I don't know, not a low midsection. That doesn't make any sense. Um, a, a thicker low section, I guess. I don't know. I don't know what I'm trying to say. I'm, I'm just trying to say I'm fat, I guess. I don't know. But um, I'm going to reinforce this just that way when I put it on, uh, and I'll just like try to put it on for you here. Um, this eventually will have uh, suspenders. And I will have to put on, um, you know, like some some tighter, you can see I'm trying to slide it on here, uh, some tighter um, clothes, because I have basketball shorts on right now. 
and just that little bit of um, like the pockets here are really getting stuck. So I'm going to need something definitely tighter. I'm actually going to try to pull these my shorts up here over the pockets. There we go. Um, um, so you can see it fits. It's just, it's very snug on my hip. So when I bring it up, I actually kind of have to pinch it and pull it out just a little bit, but it fits very good. Um, and I'm going to have suspenders that come up. So then obviously like this is going to go on here. I haven't really figured out what I'm going to do um, to hold all this in place. There's a, a, a piece here that uh, rib cage side ab area. Like I said, I've cut that up because it was too big. So I think I'm going to end up using elastic or some sort of strap just to kind of hold all that together. But um, it does line up well. Um, everything does fit pretty good. Um, so for the most part, um, like I said, coming off, taking it off is a lot easier than putting it on. But it doesn't help because I've got a lot of my pockets and everything here and they get all stuck on there. So, But very important, reinforce the areas that maybe are a little bit thinner or that you have to flex and kind of just move just a little bit. Um, I'll also show you the back piece here uh, that I modded as well. All right, so here is the uh, here's the back piece, and like I said, I, there's still some cleanup and things I have to do. What I wanted to do right off the bat is start reinforcing. So you can see on the inside here, there's a lot of reinforcement going on. So I've got a lot of a lot of welding. Um, this is all pretty much one solid piece. Now this was split in half. It's merged together here. I've also taken some scrap pieces from some pieces that broke and basically made reinforcement um, areas. So I looked to where there were openings and I just wanted to reinforce it. Now I am gonna take more PLA and completely seal this off and make and just, just, just to reinforce this. And then this whole thing will get fiberglassed. I'm not really worried about, oh, like, you know, I mean, are you really gonna notice you know, probably not really. I'm just going to cover that whole piece up that way. The more reinforcement, the better, you know. Um, there is a small back piece uh, right here that, I believe it goes like this, we will have to get welded and merged on there as well. But this is going to be its own piece. Um, unfortunately, if I try to put the chest piece on, it just gets too tight. I actually have to cut this down a little bit just to bring it in. And I had to modify it on the chest piece because the, the chest piece was, it was absolutely huge. Uh, even though I scaled it down, this, the War Machine suit's a chunkier suit. It's a bigger, beefier suit. So I want it to still kind of fit snug, not like super skin tight, but I'm not a big enough guy to <laughs> fill out a huge, a huge chest piece like that. But this is all, like I said, I used all a uh, 3D pen with some rapid fix to start the process to hold it in place. And I just made my own brackets. And I mean, this thing is very, it's completely solid now, but I I want I want more, I want it better. I wanna make sure that these pieces here that are a little bit flimsy, these side pieces here, you can actually see, uh, I had a small crack just from just adjusting things. So I reinforced it, I put some, uh, some um, JB weld on the inside and then put PLA over it. So I'm actually going to take these, heat these up, bring them in just a little bit and actually make a bracket right here too. Any place that's frail, it's much, much better just to reinforce it than to roll the dice and leave it. Cause you put this suit on and this cracks it's, and it's already painted. It's like, what do you do then? So again, I recommend getting most of the suit together before you even start sanding and everything and then build your body harness, put it on, see how it fits, reinforcing it where need be, then you get into the sanding process. And what stinks about this is, you know, I mean, I could sit there and start sanding these and I mean, I could snap it. You can see how how frail this still is, even at 20% with five walls. So that's why I'm gonna take some fiberglass, some chop mat and reinforce it. I've already done it on the chest. Um, but this piece does fit, fit well. Uh, the way this is going to go on is basically just like this. And I'm going to have some sort of strap that's going to strap it to the front chest piece. Um, but overall, it does fit well. Um, I don't want it skin tight. I'm going to have to put a lot of the electronics uh, in the back, some of the harnesses and whatnot. Um, but ultimately, it does, it does fit well um, somewhere around this region right here. And then the chest piece kind of comes out uh, right about here. I'll show you that right now.
So this is the chest piece. And again, this was the piece that I split into two and um, merge it back together with um, some rapid fix and some PLA weld. And that kind of goes right about there. Um, I did, I'm not putting it on completely because it's still just a little bit tacky. I'm already starting to reinforce it with some fiberglass. It's about 90% dry, um, but I don't want to put it on it. Still got a little bit of that fiberglass smell. So when my wife comes home, she's going to kill me because the whole house is going to stink. Not really. It doesn't smell that bad. But again, this is just um, this is just the first layer. It's very light. Um, I'm going to put more on top. This is just some loose mat that I put on. But again, it's reinforcing it because it did have a little bit of flex. And I mean, it doesn't really have much flex anymore. But I am going to put another layer on there just to be safe. And again, when I was putting the suit on and messing around with it, I got a little crack right here. And But that's not bad because then I realized where frailty areas are and I can reinforce them. So this whole piece is going to get another layer of chop mat and then really that back piece and then the cod piece. Everything else is good. I mean, these legs, all, all, all this stuff here is, I mean, incredibly solid. So it's really just the chest area and the lower waist area that I'm going to have to reinforce with fiberglass. But I'm taking the, the proper steps to reinforce it with additional PLA first. Um, I just don't want any issues down the road. The wor last thing I want is have this suit completely sanded, looking great, working electronics, and then it cracks, you know? So again, that's why I'm, I'm doing this video. Um, it's, it's, it's probably gonna be eight or nine parts minimum. I'm just warning you right now. Um, but I'm letting you know a realistic view of like, hey, these this is what can happen. It's, it's not all smooth sailing. You don't just print this thing, sand it, paint it, throw it on, it's good to go. You gotta have reinforcements, you gotta have supports, you gotta have different things. So this is gonna be as real of a video as you'll ever find as far as what it takes to have a suit actually built and you know mostly functional. And I'm not using Arduino. I'm not using any code, I'm all analog. So everything is gonna be switches, buttons, relays, you know, things like that. Um, the hand is gonna have tilt sensors in it where the lights automatically go on. Um, eventually, I'll have a suit that's Arduino powered. Um, however, I'm not going to lie. Um, I don't really know a lot about it and I have my plate full enough with doing this. So I'm going to stick with what I know and switches, relays, and sensors is what I know. So that's what's going to go into my suit. Um, so like I said, that's pretty much it for, um, all of the parts and the pieces. All right. So now that you had a look of it, let's figure out, well, how much filament did it use to build this? It's about as real as it can get. If you can get it in one shot, this is roughly what you're looking at. So the arms from the biceps to the forearms to the shoulder pieces and the arm cannons, uh, it was roughly one and a half rolls of filament per arm. So for arms, we're at three rolls of filament a minute. Now I'm a smaller guy. If you're a bigger guy, let me adjust my camera. I don't, my whole head's cut off here. Let me adjust this. Not that you want to even see my face anyways, but what does it matter? Um, if you're a bigger guy, it's going to be more. But for me, it was about a roll and a half of filament each arm. Arm weapons, hands, forearms, biceps, shoulders, boom. So that's about three rolls of filament right there, okay? Now, staying up top, we go to the chest. Uh, that was probably about a little bit more than half a roll. If we compensate and say, hey, the whole piece here, um, I would say this piece, this piece here and the chest piece was almost two rolls. So we're at close to five rolls of filament, okay? Um, the legs for the most part, because this was about 580 grams and this was somewhere around, I believe 313, we're just gonna say one roll of filament, okay? So now we're, that's each leg with, and I'm and also too with the knee piece. So we're definitely going to be at one roll of filament per leg. So that's two more rolls added on to the existing five. So now we're at uh, seven rolls of filament. Uh, cod piece, you know, your side, your, your, your abs, your side pieces. Um, this here was easily uh, close to a roll. Um, again, I didn't do it in one shot. But the hip pieces, the cod piece, these little side pieces here, I'd say it was about three quarters of a roll. Uh, and then this here is going to be the remaining 250. So that's another roll. So we're at eight. Um, 
the feet weren't much um i'd say about a quarter roll for both the feet it was wasn't too bad uh might be a little bit more but we'll just say a quarter roll for now um the neck wasn't much uh the gun actually was quite a bit because it's so thick uh the gun was like a quarter roll so now we're half so long of the short i say that all the time um including the helmet and everything a guy my size, 5'6", five, 5'7", five, around 150, 155 pounds, you're probably looking at anywhere from seven to nine rolls of filament, depending on how well you print it. Um, I am going to say I used, because I had some issues where I had some reprints, it was probably closer to nine. Um, it's about 200 bucks in filament. That's kind of how I look at it. Um, you know, anybody that tells you different, it's, you know, it's, it's not true at all. Most of these suits, um, without your time being involved, you're going to be in the five to $600 range when you have all your materials. So you've got your things like your elastics, your, your straps, your electronics, the amount of paint and filler, um, is going to be quite a bit. Um, I would say that electronics wise, I'm probably going to be at maybe a hundred dollars in components. Um, it's just with servos and LEDs and everything. Um, the paint's probably going to be about 200 the, the, I think the paint and the filament are going to be close for price. And that's where it's going to be a bulk of the, uh, you know, of, of the, the amount, the dollar amount. Um, but then you've got like your sandpaper that you're going to rifle through, um, your spot putties. Um, you know, that $200 I'm rolling in filler primer, but, you know, glazing putties, um, Bondo and an additional PLA just for doing PLA, PLA welding and doing things like rapid fix, any adhesives, uh, anything like that. Um, these suits are anywhere from five to six hundred dollars just in raw materials. That's not including your time, you know. So that's really again that that is that is a a long of the short. And you know, like things like this on these cod this cod piece here, where I don't know why it printed so kind of junky right there, but. I'm just going to be taking some plastic, uh, some plastic metal and covering this whole thing, sanding it, and then just using a little bit of body filler. So there's a lot of things that you're going to need um, when building these suits, material-wise. You know, body filler, uh, glazing putty, plastic metal, uh, JB weld, some sort of adhesive, maybe super glue, uh, Velcro, elastic, nylon straps, buckle clips, and then your electronics, all your wiring, your mounts, your foam. You know. Um, I don't even know. I'm using just uh, some foam that I had got off Amazon. I don't know how much more of it I'm going to need, but that was, I think, like 25 bucks. Hot glue. Just hot glue. I'm probably going to use a whole case of hot glue just to hold certain things in place. Magnets. You know, I've got these. Magnets <laughs> Magnets aren't cheap. I don't know when magnets got expensive, but it's like the bigger ones that are heavy duty, they are not cheap. So, again, this is just kind of what it takes the, the steps and the processes to, uh, you know, to building this suit. Um, it's going to be fun. It's going to be frustrating. Like I said, I don't know how much I'm going to have in 90 days. I'm hoping as much as possible, but this is just phase one. It's all printed. I just kind of wanted to show you guys what I went through, uh, what it costs. Like I said, I think we're in the $200 range, about 200 bucks in filament. Um, and that was me with some goofs. Um, and you know, I'll, I'm, I'm, I'm keeping all my receipts and I'm tailing everything up. So when the suit is done, I'll let you know. Um, you know, this suit has decals and different things. Of course, they all cost money. So uh, it will definitely be a fun, fun part. Now, moving on to part two of this video, what I'm going to show you there specifically is uh, some PLA and merging tips. So I'm going to be using things like Rapid Fix and um, my 3D pen with a soldering iron. So PLA welding um, and merging them together. Uh, I am going to show you my process for uh, applying chopped matte fiberglass to reinforcing the parts. And we are going to, I'm going to be showing you guys how I built the, um, the bodysuit where everything clicks in. So I have the stuff now. Uh, I'm actually going to be doing it before I even get into any sanding. I'm just going to temporarily hot glue them in place to make sure everything sits. I want to have the suit on and see how it flexes and moves. Because if I have to trim any areas, I want to trim that before I get into painting. Um, so video two is going to be mostly just preparation and getting the suit on, um, reinforcing everything and showing you guys some, some tips and tricks on what I use to cut them down, 
um, trimming them, bending them, heating them, things like that. Um, so by the next video, I'll actually have the whole suit on and actually show you how, how everything works. Um, and I've, like I said, I've done some other minor um, electronic things like in the hand and things like that. Um, the electronics probably won't come until I start tanning the suit. I'm really, I'm really not sure. I'm going to start, I started messing around with the faceplate bracket this morning. Um, it's just something where I need to, I kind of need to set a few hours aside just to get to that because it's just getting everything placed perfectly. I need to be in a quiet spot away from my kids. So I think I'm running in and, and messing something up, but yeah, that, like I said, I, I'm not sure when I'll get into electronics. Um, I'll probably honestly get into sanding it and priming it before I do the electronics, but I'll definitely have the elect most of the electronics done um, before um, I actually start painting because you always want to have everything moving and, and, you know, maneuvering the way you want before you get into paint. Um, so that'll kind of be the whole process. But like I said, next video here, building the bodysuit, getting it to fit, um, trimming, pieces down for better fitment, merging pieces together, show you that PLA welding and my welding, um, my merging process using rapid fix. Um, and just, like I said, just starting the process, getting everything fit on. So uh, I still have a couple areas here where I've got to fill in some gaps and, and weld some things together. So that'll be in the next video. So this is just an intro, give you a glimpse of what it takes to build a suit. And it is fun. <laughs> Uh, but again, I did use three printers, guys, so I was able to knock out this printing in about two and a half weeks. Um, I did let two of my printers uh, kind of go uh, run through the night. Obviously, my other printer is right there. You can see it in the corner. Um, and that was mostly for little parts for, you know, things like this and the hand covers, elbow covers. So, um, yeah, but they weren't running like 24-7 all the time. Um there were just some days where it was like six at night and I'm like, I'm not setting up another print. I'm just going to relax, you know? So take your time though, guys. Like I said, it doesn't, um, we're not out running the new CR6 that prints at like 200 millimeters per second or whatever it is, you know? Um, take your time. It will reflect in the print. Like I said, these prints here were all done at, um, you know, 0 0.32 layer height and they, uh, they came out really good. I do run a, uh, a lower, uh, jerk and acceleration uh, setting on mine. Um, I like to keep my jerk at around 12, 12 millimeters per second. And um, same thing with the acceleration. I actually bumped mine down to about 400. Um, it's that way. It's just, it's just, it runs smoother. Yes, it does take longer, but it is, it is very beneficial. Um, but that is about it for this video. Cause you have heard me talk way too long. Um, like I said, there's going to be more parts. The next part we're going to get into building that, that suit harness with the elastic, with the nylon. Um, I've got plenty of nylon and then all the clips. It's just all thrown in this box down here. So uh, that'll be something fun. I'm going to have my wife's help uh, with that because she is the sewing master. So um, that'll be a nice dry run to see how that um, harness, how we click it all together and keep it in place and see what we need to change and what we need to modify. Uh, that way, if you're building your Iron Man suit right now, you can build along with me. And hopefully this tutorial and this showcase kind of helps you. Um, but that's it for now. I've got more work to do. Got to film more stuff so you guys can see the progress. So uh, until next time, guys, DW signing off. I'm going to go start getting some chop mat ready and get my mask on and my rubber gloves and start getting ready to perform surgery and reinforcing all these parts. So... Uh, until the next video, guys, I thank you for watching. If you're a subscriber, thank you so much. If you're not a subscriber, click that subscribe button because we got a lot of content uh, in this build here. Um, for now, guys, we'll see you later. Uh, I'll see you for part two of this video in a short week or two. We'll see you next time, guys. Thanks.